Și astăzi, Natalia Cusendova vă prezintă informații proaspete de la Guvernul Provincial despre situația crizei COVID. Ms. Cusendova, welcome again to our show. I'm glad that we have you here to give us some explanations about what's happening, what are the latest news and uh, what is the trend in the evolution of this uh, coronavirus. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So in terms of the evolution of the virus, uh, as we are seeing, uh, we will be slowly entering the third wave. And this is uh, what we're seeing is the prevalence of different strains uh, that are happening in our community, especially in the region of Peel. But what is good uh, news is that our daily positivity uh, rates are actually decreasing. So there is a uh, room to be cautiously optimistic. Uh, today, we have only a little bit above 1,000 cases in Ontario. So uh, if these numbers keep up, slowly and surely, we will be moving more of our public health units into less restricted zones. So right now in the region of Peel, as everyone knows, and in Toronto, we are still under gray lockdown zone, but we are looking at the trends and we are certainly hopeful that in the coming weeks, we'll be able to move into the red zone. And just so people understand, what does it mean? Uh, what are we looking at when we are considering the red zone? So in the red zone, the weekly incidence rate uh, is 40 per 100,000 or less. And so those are the numbers we are looking at. At. In Peel and Toronto, we are not quite there, but we are slowly getting to that number. Per percent positivity rate is 2.5 or more, and the RT number is 1.2 or more. So those are the numbers that our public health officials are looking at when they are deciding whether to move us into the red zone. And in general, how's, how does the government decide uh, what area goes into what zone, like based on the colors? Yes, yeah, so we are always looking at the trends with our chief medical officer of health, Dr. Williams, but of course he has his colleagues, 34 medical officers of health that report directly to him from the local public health units. So in the region of Peel, our officer is Dr. Lowe. In Toronto, it's Dr. Davila. And so Dr. Williams has ongoing conversations uh, with these public health units to decide and to give the best advice to the premier and our cabinet about when and how to move forward into the zones. So some of the things that we are looking at, I've already mentioned, you know, the cases per 100,000 percent positivity rate, the RT number, but other things that are looking at as well is our hospital capacity. Are our hospitals being currently overwhelmed? What is the current ICU occupancy rate? Uh, and also we're looking at the variants because those are of concern to us. And, you know, with Peel being part of, uh, you know, we, we have an international airport. This is certainly adding to that uh, additional challenge when we're trying to screen people for the new strain and make sure that they quarantine uh, under the federal hotel quarantine program. Uh, we know everybody's suffering, people, businesses. Uh, what are the current government support initiatives for different categories? And here we can mention uh, mental health, small and medium businesses, uh, tourism, culture, etc. Absolutely. And so we are spending a lot of money to support people and businesses. This is the number one thing that we did as a conservative government. We decided very early on that this is not a time for austerity and this is not a time to balance the budget, but this is a time that we truly, truly need to support our businesses. And so that's why you're seeing unprecedented governmental spending uh, to the tune of $30 billion we have spent so far to support our hospital system, but also to support people. So we're spending um, a lot of money to allow mental health practitioners to transition to provide online services. So we had a recent, a recent announcement of $175 million to, to support that. We have another fund uh, dedicated to supporting youth who are dealing with mental health challenges. As you can imagine, youth are unable to go to school uh, or they a lot of youth are still um, using the online system. And so that isolation from their peers and um, being unable to you know, use that energy that our youth have, um, you know, it does it does result in a higher incidence in mental health challenges among our youth. For our small businesses, we have our minister Prabhmeet Sarkaria, 
who is leading the charge in uh, in our economic recovery together with Victor Fideli and of course Peter Bethlehem Falvey. All of these ministers are working together and uh, some people may not be aware that we have announced a $700 million fund. That's a lot of money to support small businesses. So for those of you interested, if you are a small business, especially in those affected areas in Peel and Toronto, please go on our website, ontario.ca slash small business, and you can apply for all kinds of funding there, including for PPE, for mental health supports, and for direct funding uh, to help with your revenue loss. But another thing that I would like to share today that Premier Ford has announced on Friday, which is a big step towards the right direction, is that our places of worship in Peel and Toronto will be allowed to open at 15% capacity as of March 15th, which is Monday. So this is a huge step forward. We are so thrilled to receive this news because we have been hearing from our parishioners, from worshipers, and from people of different faiths that we do need to have that ability to go and worship in person. This is one of the fundamental rights as Canadians. This is a cornerstone of our democracy. And so we are just so thrilled that we are moving towards this 15% capacity model as of Monday, March 15th. And I wanna thank our premier for that because he's been really working with our religious leaders and with our healthcare experts to ensure that uh, we move towards the right direction. Um, how is the vaccination uh, progressing in the, in the province? So I looked at the data just before this interview, and I'm happy to say that as of yesterday in Ontario, we have vaccinated over 1 million people. So that's a major, major milestone, and we're so thrilled. But of course, um, you know, we have different kinds of vaccines. We have four which are uh, available now on the market. And so there is a lot of information going around and maybe a little bit of confusion. So that's why it's so important that we as MPPs, um, we're answering all phone calls from our constituents who are asking where and when they can get a vaccine. And this may vary according to where you live, because if you live in a region like a hotspot in Peel, this vaccination rollout might look a little bit different than if you live in a more remote and rural area in Ontario. But what we, what we did hear from our Prime Minister very recently is that Ontario is getting an additional 2 million vaccines in the next two weeks. And so in the next two weeks, you will see a huge uptake of vaccinations. And of course, we're ready with our uh, vaccination mass centers, mass vaccination centers. In Mississauga, we have several of them, including at the University of Toronto, Mississauga site. And I know in Toronto, uh, there are several sites as well at the Pearson uh, location. So um, the next two, three weeks, um, most people will be able to receive, um, as, especially our seniors, will be able to receive their first dose of the vaccine. So we are well on our way and we're super excited because really the vaccination is what will make the hot, biggest difference in our efforts to end this pandemic just to stay up to date, uh, to, to go on our government website for the most up to date uh, information as of March 15th, which is on Monday, there will be an online portal, uh, which is province wide for people to go and sign up. But I know in some communities, you have local portals. I know in Mississauga, our Trillium Health Partners have their own portal for vaccination. But the most important thing is to sign up and then just wait to hear from your public health unit to receive your vaccine. And I just want to reiterate the message that all four vaccine products that have been approved by Health Canada are safe. There might be some small sign of side effects such redness or, or pain at the, at the site of the vaccination, but we are monitoring this very closely. So please rest assured that all the vaccine products are safe to be used in Canada. To all Ontarians who are doing the right thing and staying at home, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. And just in case some of you need a quick reminder of what we're asking, please stay at home. Stats a casa.